Matt Farbaugh with defense coordinator Marco Pacora. Marco is in his fourth year here at St. Francis, coached the D-backs for a couple of years, he is in his second year as the defensive coordinator, and the defense has picked up uh, where it left off. A year ago, 24 turnovers, 10 already this year, 5 interceptions, 5 fumble recoveries. They have just been downright stingy in scoring. Only 25 points have been scored on the defense. That's through three games. That's not an average fan. That's a total through the first three games. They ranked among the national leaders last year, allowing just under 20 points per game. Marco, through three games, your assessment of your unit's performance. I'm really proud of the guys and the way they're, the way they're playing. You know, their effort and their attitudes are unbelievable. I think we have a great culture. Uh, you know, that's the structure and which way things are run. And right now, the structure is driving the function. And, uh, and the product on the field is ending in good results. But, you know, we're more worried about it. You know, honestly, I hate statistics. You know, anytime I see anything on Twitter or anything, you know, I scroll right through it fast. You know, I don't like reading anything about, you know, how we're playing because that's not our focus. You know, our focus is to, there's one stat that matters, and that's wins and losses on Saturdays. And we're going to take it one play at a time, one game at a time, you know, one practice at a time. And always worry about the process, you know, never about the result. You know, when the season's over, uh, we can look back at all that and see where we ended up. But, you know, for now we're worried about, you know, today's practice, today's meetings, you know, and how, in which way each individual can prepare best, you know, for Liberty. I have some Liberty statistics that concern me. 48 against Baylor, 58 points uh, for the Flames against Morehead State, 42 against Indiana State. They were held uh, to 10 at Jacksonville State, but they have demonstrated through four games they can score. It's awesome, right? It's awesome. <laughs> you know, we love an opportunity, man. Opponents are just opportunity to us, opportunities for us to show, you know, how hard we work and how good we are. So we're excited for the, uh, the chance to go down there and play them. They got, you know, you can speak volumes about their offense and what they've done this year and the players they have and their scheme. You know, it's awesome. And we're extremely excited, you know, to face the challenge and we're going to be up for it. You've had some uh, some key pieces gone from last year. Lorenzo's with the 49ers. Wes in the middle was a real stalwart. You had Solomon Leano uh, anchoring that linebacking core. Uh, the performance has been good. Have you been pleased with the people who have stepped up in some of the? Now there are other holes, but have you been pleased with the way you've been able to fill in uh, those losses to graduation? Yes, for sure. And I think each case is a little bit different on how we've you know grown. You know, honestly, I mean, we had to deal with. Life after Lorenzo, you know, earlier than we wanted to last year. You know, and in reality, he only really played, you know, half our games last year, you know, unfortunately, you know, due to injury. So we were prepared uh, in the back end, and, you know, we have a ton of good players back there, and we've played a ton, and they've been playing really well. Keem Kinnar and Nick Rodella, you know, can't speak enough about those two, and their work ethic and their preparation is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, they're the type of kids that when we recruit, you know, we want guys like that. And then the linebacker standpoint, you know, Orsini, Calvin Beanie, Ben Bruni, uh, Gibbs Tinney, they've, they've played a lot of football here, you know, so they've been around the block and, you know, losing Solomon uh, hurts, you know, we're getting, you know, all four of those guys are playing, all four of those guys are playing key roles. And they're a really smart group, you know, and I tell our defense that all the time, be who we are. You know, we're a bunch of underdogs, we're a bunch of smart, tough guys, you know, and that's what we want to put on the field on Saturdays. This is your fourth year, second as a defense coordinator. Uh, area fans would know this, but you come from a coaching family, to say the least. Your father, Pat Pacora, has been coaching wrestling uh, down at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown for four decades. He's coached 12 national titles fans and uh, has 569 dual meet wins. That's second among all divisions. We've seen your style. You bring energy to the sideline, uh, to be sure. Could you maybe compare... Uh, your style to your dad's coaching style a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everything philosophy-wise that I believe in coaching, you know, is a direct correlation to my dad. And anytime I see him, you know, the more I coach, the more fun it is to talk to him about coaching. And, uh, you know, all the lessons, you know, growing up, they didn't hit home as much, you know, about coaching until I began, you know, coaching. So now, you know, when I get a chance to see him on some off days or at nights, you know, we really can elaborate, uh, you know, on coaching styles and, you know, everyone thinks he had me in the basement, you know, poking a stick at me, you know, <laughs> coached me my whole life. And you know, the best thing he ever did for me is, you know, being a dad first, you know, before being, you know, a coach. Well, it sounds like he's had an impact. You've certainly had an impact here as the D.C. Good luck down at Thank Liberty you. On Appreciate it. Pat Farbaugh with graduate student, 
transfer Bear Fenimore, the starting quarterback through the first three games. He's pursuing his master's degree in human resource management, transferred to St. Francis uh, from the University of Houston with another year of eligibility remaining after this season. Has gotten off to a good start in his St. Francis career. 764 yards, 8 to 1 touchdown to turnover ratio through the first three games. Very impressive passing percentage. 65% has already claimed a Northeast Conference Offensive Player of the Week award and had three touchdowns in the conference opener against the Seahawks. Bear, you're going to be tested. You're going into Liberty. This is a team that comes out of the Big South. They're uh, very good. They've played already a BCS team and won. It'll be a good test for the offensive side this Saturday down in Lynchburg. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Liberty's a great team. Um, they've done very well for themselves these uh, past four games. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for uh, the team to go down there and uh, play a very uh, quality opponent, and we're just looking forward to it. First loss against Towson, then the bye week. Uh, a lot of people don't like bye weeks to begin with. Coming after a loss, I'm sure everyone is anxious to get down there and get back on the field against another opponent. How do you think the two weeks since that Towson game have gone from a practice standpoint for the offensive players? I think it's been very productive. Uh, obviously, we didn't want to go into the bye week with a loss, but uh, we had a very productive bye week. Uh, we got a lot accomplished. Uh, we got a lot of things fixed and handled, and uh, I think this is a good opportunity. And um, you know, this was a great uh, uh, time for you know our coaching staff to put together a game plan that we feel comfortable with heading into the Liberty game. Away from the field, you relocated from Texas to Western Pennsylvania. Not the football transition. How's the transition in terms of parts of the country gone for you? Yeah, it's it's gone well. Uh, I haven't, you know, adjusted to the cold very well, uh, per se, but, um, you know, I got my winter clothes. and You're ready to go. I'm ready to go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the family front, tell us a little bit uh, about some of your family members. We talked to Sean, but you have an uncle that played at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and a cousin who played uh, down at Louisiana State. Yes, sir. So uh, both of them were big offensive linemen. Uh, they both played in the mid-90s, late-90s, and, uh, so I come from a you know very football background, and um, you know I only got to see film of them. I never got to see them live. I'm not that old, but um, would you have taken them on your offensive line? Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they're family members. I trust them. I love them. Uh, they're both big, uh, big, huge, physical guys. So that would have been fun. That would have been cool. Do they follow your uh, collegiate playing career now? I uh, will. Um, one of them uh, passed away uh, a few years back, but then the other one. Uh, he keeps in touch. Okay. Have the fans, uh, your fans uh, back home, been able to follow uh, through you know, the internet? Obviously, the games are webcast. Uh, do you have a lot of folks in, uh, in the Austin area tuning in? Yeah, uh, there's tons of people from the Austin area. Um, uh, I'm very thankful to have a very supportive uh, uh, group of friends in Austin that keep in touch with me. And uh, even my friends at University of Houston, I have a lot of coaches from there that keep up with me. Uh, professors that email me and stuff like that. So it's been very nice to go from one part of the country to the next and know that I have that good of uh, relationships where they keep up with me. Well, we feel very fortunate to have had you find your way uh, to Loretto from Austin via Houston. And uh, we wish you all the best awesome. this week against Liberty. Pat Farbaugh with senior defensive lineman and marketing major Sean McCord. Sean's from Aberdeen, New Jersey, and Red Bank Catholic High School. And first off, Sean, congrats on a fast start to you and the defensive unit through three games. Thank you very much. How have you felt, I asked Coach Pecora this question, I'll ask you as a senior leader in the defense, how have you felt about some of the young guys in terms of filling the, the various holes that we had coming into this season on the defensive side? Well, I have a full trust in everybody on the defense. Everybody that gets in the game, um, this is what we do. We're football players. We prepare for this all year round. Everybody that gets in knows the expectation that is set on the field that you have to play at and uphold. So um, we just go in there, we play fast, we play physical. You started two of the first three games, had five tackles in that opener against Lockhaven and a sack in the conference opener against Wagner. Uh, this is going to be a test. Towson was certainly a test and then the bye week last week, but now going down to Liberty and then following that up with Presbyterian. This is a good Big South team we have to take on that open the season with the win over Baylor. Yeah, we're not focusing too much on that. I mean, this is just the next opponent. This is just the next game for us. Um, we watch film on them, we see what they can do. We're just going to go out there, we're going to play fast, and we're going to play physical, and we'll see what happens at the end. Do you have a preference, uh, first three were at home, 
now we're on the road for a month. As a, as a, personally, do you have a preference on playing on the road or at home? Um, I guess I would like to play home more just because it makes it a little bit easier, makes it easier on the drive and after the game your body feels real banged up so getting on that bus tight and all sore sometimes uh, it hurts a little bit but um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next four games, they're important games, every game is important but these next four are definitely uh, the next challenge that we have to get into accomplishing our goals for the year. Was that one of, uh, while we're talking about home versus away, was that one of the best environments uh, you've seen your four year guy against Towson, uh, that Saturday night game, we came up on the short end but the crowd was really into it. Yeah, that was one of the best outcomes we had. Um, really appreciate everybody for coming. Um, it definitely probably, to me, compared to Duquesne last year mm -hmm. under the lights, uh, it's always good to be here under the lights Saturday night. I think I think um, it was a great turnout. Tell me a little bit about, uh, we were talking about, uh, Marco and I, about Lorenzo being with the Niners. You also have a family member who's currently in the National Football League. Tell uh, the viewers a little bit about uh, your cousin. Yeah, my cousin Vinnie Curry went to Marshall University. Um, he plays with the Eagles now. He's a defensive end, and uh, he's just a great role model to have in the family. He's the only family member that we have right now playing in the NFL. He's uh, he, he every every summer he gets the family together two three times, big events. Um, he brings everybody together, and it's just good to have him around as a role model, just to lead and, and show if you work hard, and then you can accomplish things like he has accomplished in his life. Do you take anything uh, his style that you incorporate into your game? I try to watch the him. defense. I try to watch him on film as much as I can. Um, I, he plays fast. He plays physical. He's a, a big guy, and you know he just bulldozes through people. But for the most part, you know he's got a lot going on. He, he does. Uh, you know football's a full time job for him, so he's training down in Ocean City, and um, when he's not, he's down around with the family and stuff like that. Well, it's been fun to watch you play. Uh, you're going on the road for a while now. We wish you all the best of luck at Liberty.